This was my Z270 ITX motherboard with a 7700K CPU. Quite modified. And I think I killed it. Can you see what I screwed up on on this motherboard just by looking at it right now? I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, I'll point it out if you haven't figured it out yet. The mounting holes for the heatsink. You're not supposed to be seeing copper on them. So yeah, I screwed up. There are traces underneath here because I was trying to upgrade it and put that on it, the Liquid Freezer 280. But they also give you for the Liquid Freezer 280, I think I still have them on the back here. Yeah, here. They give you these little sticky rubber washers because it needs to mount directly to the motherboard. So this way you don't screw it up. And I put them on the back, but I was um, kind of distracted when I did the front and I completely forgot to put them on. So as I tightened down the nuts for it, the nuts not having a piece of vinyl or rubber or whatever to rub onto as it tightens went right onto the solder mask and into the copper traces. So the motherboard started up, didn't do anything, and it has like a row of LEDs underneath here. And it was lighting up for about 15 seconds and then pfft, that's it. If you try turning on the power now, it doesn't do anything other than pull 35 watts. And there's like a little LED, a little amber LED off to the side here that says, hey, I have power, and that's all it does. Doesn't post, doesn't do anything. Uh, the RAM is still good because the RAM, I couldn't have my gaming computer down. And yes, it is over there running. So I switched it on over and got a ASRock B5 B550M Steel Legend motherboard. Open box from Micro Center, so I saved like $25. And a Ryzen 5 5600X from Micro Center. So this way the unit is back up and running. I know it's not supposed to be running on 2400 megahertz RAM, but it does work for the time being until I get 3600 megahertz. I'm waiting for that to come in. But the RAM still works. So that leads me to believe, since the RAM wasn't here, come on, focus, thank you. The RAM was in here, the RAM is still good. This unit still pulls 35 watts when you try to power it on, but it doesn't do anything. I believe the CPU is still good. I think we're just having issues here. So I'm going to attempt to repair this, but my hopes are not very high. What we're gonna do is try to sand away very gently the solder mask in this area so we can expose more of the copper traces. And then we'll lay a little bit of solder on it, hopefully, and repair it and find what was broken and maybe we'll get lucky and revive this. And the reason why I don't want to buy another uh, ITX Z270 motherboard is the only place that they're still available is in Israel. And this board came from Israel. And I don't want to wait a month. So if I can't get the motherboard to work, I will sell off the CPU and throw away the motherboard. But let's give it a shot and see if we can revive it. Okay, so I got my little... Dremel here and a very, very fine sanding disc. So let's see if we can just touch it a little bit and see how much damage I can do now. <laughs> see, now you can see the copper traces that are coming underneath here. We gotta find out what's broken. Okay, I don't think anything's broken on this one. Let's move over to this one. That's definitely a broken trace. That's another potential broken trace right there. That's definitely got some damage in that spot. Let's check over here. This one looks okay. This one's gonna be hard to get the little sander in there. <sighs> we take this heat sink off first. This way we can get a little more space in there. Now let's see if we can get in here and finish sanding this little spot better. Let's 
We're missing a whole big piece of trace right there. Okay, so I see right here, one trace right here is completely blown out. Right there, on here. This one looks okay. This one, I'm missing part of a trace. Would help, yeah, okay. Right here, I am missing part of that trace and possibly this one needs to be touched up. This one looks okay. This right here, I think I gotta sand that down just a little bit more because I'm not sure if that's a uh, solder mask or if that's a broken trace. Let me see that. Okay. That trace is okay. So, it looks like we have a little bit of damage right here. Definitely right here. And then over here, I'm not seeing any real damage. It looks like we got okay on this one and this one. This one and this one needs to be repaired. So, let me get set up for that. Okay, what I'm going to attempt to do is up here where it looks like they're kind of beat but not completely, I'm going to tin them and see if that helps refill right there. So this is just a little bit of flux. And that looks a ton better now than what was. Now, I'm not sure if I can tin this. Let's give that a shot because it looks like too much of it's worn off. Yeah, see the differential pair that's sitting right here tin nicely, that didn't. So I'm gonna have to do a further repair to that. So give me a minute. Okay, so I turned it around so I have a better view so I can work on it. But let's see if we can repair this. And that repairs that trace in theory. We'll have to test it to see if it actually works. And I think that's all we have to do on this one. This hole was okay. So this is going to be the trouble one because I got this long piece right here that I also need to fix. And I think that's it really. It's just this one trace right here. I don't see any other issues. So let's go ahead and fix this one now. Okay, let me clean this up, put both heat sinks back on and get a heat sink on the CPU and we'll see if I actually saved it or this was just a complete waste. Okay, I got the heat sink back on it. I have an HDMI out in case this thing actually gets a heartbeat again. Uh, 24 pin ATX and the 8 pin 12 volt EPS cable. So let's just turn the power supply on, wherever I the button is. There we go. Now see, we get a nice little orange light right here, and we're pulling 45 watts right now. But I have no bottom lights. I have no screen. Let's see if we can short the pins and turn this thing on, once I remember where everything is here. Uh, LED, reset, hard drive, power, power's over here. Nope, no power difference, no screen. Oh yeah, duh. Kind of the ram. Something's responding. Because this is the clear CMOS right here. And if I touch it, it immediately kills off the power. As soon as I release it, it wakes back up. But we're back to pulling 40 watts. It's not doing anything. I'm not getting any display. I'm not getting any bottom lights. And it won't respond to a manual shutdown. Okay, so I'm at a loss. We've repaired the traces, but I think what's probably happened now is when the nuts originally wore off the solder mask and not only rubbed off some of the traces, but also shorted some other traces, chances are we've probably blown up one or two more chips somewhere on this board. And there's no way for me to reliably trace that and try to figure out what's wrong with it and it's just not economical so at this point i'm going to have to call this a fail and say sorry the motherboard's dead i'm going to have to try the cpu in my other 77th gen motherboard and the only one i have right now is my mining rig so hopefully i don't blow up my mining rig when i try the cpu to make sure the cpu at least itself is still good so if you like this video, thumbs up, please. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. 
Um, this was just, uh, hey, this is why you read the instructions and don't get distracted when you're assembling stuff because you might break it. And that's a $250 motherboard down the drain because I forgot to put on little rubber protectors that came with the kit. So live and let learn and don't do it again. And I will see you next video.